I feel like such a genius right now. That is not too bad. That that works awesomely. Sweet! How's it going there, YouTubers? The Hippie Gunner here. And today, we are going to test green ammo. Yes, going green as in the short range green 22 LR by CCI 22 long rifle at 1650 feet per second. It's a 21 grain bullet, heavier than your 17 HMR, but not going near as fast. And they're, here's the standard lead round nose for the pistol. And here is the plasticky looking bullet. I don't quite know what they're made of. Um, you can research that yourself, but they're biodegradable as far as I understand. So they're lead free. Um, not to say that that does horrible things, but anyway, um, we're going to test them for functionality in semi-automatics, such as the Smith & Wesson M&P 22 and the Ruger 1022. Um, I might group them in the Ruger 1022. I'm shooting the, uh, I'm shooting them out of a rifle just because I want to get that 1650 feet per second, which I can't really get out of the pistol due to the four inch barrel. So doing it out of the rifle here. And uh, I might group them, but ultimately we're going to see the uh, hydrostatic shock between standard lead round nose of Wildcat 22 high velocity rimfire cartridges. And I know you want me to stop blabbing, so let's get to shooting. Wait, 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 wait one last second. Um, we're going to do a penetration test also in this wood block here. Standard lead round nose. All right, green, hollow point, 21 grain bullets. That one fed. Huh, about the same result. So I just got done shooting the slow-mo and I noticed it didn't cycle. And there's the first one from the original, and that didn't cycle either. So you get there scuffing up on top there. That's weird. Maybe it needs bullet weight to actually keep it down. I don't know. On the very left, you have the lead round nose. And on the very right, you have the green 21 grain hollow point. And from what I see, they either look the same or the green hollow point actually put more of a whop on that gallon jug there. I... I'm impressed, honestly, um, but we were having some jams in the Ruger, so now we're going to move on to the function test. Lead round nose, typical pistol test. Just fine. Chamber clear. Green 21 grain um, hollow point bullets, pistol test, functionality. Didn't fully pump the slide. Stove pipe. That fed. Maybe. Ah, it ejected but didn't kick it back enough to load another round. Think that worked? Yep. 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 And we are empty. So, they kind of work. I don't know, maybe that spring tension in the magazine has to get down before they work properly. Um, they might just be too light. Look at my hair. Oh my god. <laughs> anyway, part of being a hippie. Um, let's move on to the rifle, the Ruger, where it was having problems. Lead round nose function test. Should be no problems.
All right. And we are clear. So I only had about 15 rounds in this magazine. I'm not exactly sure. But um, I had to take five out of the Ruger magazine because I want to group them for you guys just as a little extra something or another. Anyway, um, we're going to test the functionality of the green um, hollow point 21 grain. Said it enough. What the hell? I had a round stuck in the chamber of one of the green hollow points from the slow-mo test. All right, green hollow points, Ruger 1022. Seem to cycle, 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 cycle. Seems to be accurate too. It hit my steel plate still in there. And of course we get a non-cycle. See what happened in there? I don't know if the camera will pick that up, but it's uh didn't feed all the way. Looks like it might be the last round too. Hold on. That's weird. Okay. I don't know where the bullet went. It fell on the ground, but it's not here. Anyway, um, seems to function, seems to be accurate. Um, I like these bullets. Uh, they're not entirely reliable, but they're going green, man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, let's move on to the penetration test. Just a little side note here. Here are the two bullets that jammed in the gun. Um, they seem to just launch up and they completely miss the chamber and they get jammed, as you can see. Anyway. On the penetration test. Lead round nose on top of a going green bullet. Lead round nose. Kill shot. Green hollow point. Environmental science! Ooh, smoky. Alright, we are in the garage and first things to notice, they did not penetrate the block at all. So we definitely have bullets in there and here's the lead round nose and then here's the green hollow point. What I want you to notice is look at how clean that is. And look at how dirty and leady that is. Does this stuff keep your barrel clean, I wonder? I don't know. It just doesn't seem to... That's really dirty. I, don't, I mean, it's lead, and then that's just clean. Blown away. Anyway, let's cut this block open and uh, see what kind of damage we got. Oh, shoot. I made a mess. All right. I have the two halves of the wood block here. And uh, here's the... Lead round nose, it only made about a three quarters of an inch in, maybe an inch, but doubtful. Um, and you can see it just flattened out and stopped right in there. Not very impressive. And then we have the canal. I dug it out. Um, and it looks like the bullet disintegrated. There's pieces all of it into it, but it just ends and there's no bullet to be found. So I wonder if it just all fell apart and embedded So that's the penetration the test, and I'm going to get out and group them sometime, but it's like 95 degrees out right now, and I'm just cooked. I'm going to go get a lemonade. But um, anyway, so the penetration test, the green bullets actually did better. The hollow point bullets did better than a lead round nose 22 bullet. Um, now the bullet's not recoverable. I don't know. Ooh, excuse me. I don't know where it went, but... Um, yeah, I, I, I'm really impressed by these rounds. For the most part, they run in a semi-automatic. Um, they don't like the run at the beginning um, of a magazine. That must just be having to do with standard spring tension in a magazine. I don't know. But anyway, um, they, they function well, and I'm going to group them here for you, and we'll close this video. All right, guys, it is blistering hot out right now. I oh, Just sitting outside and doing nothing, I'm sweating. Anyway, um, so we have the Ruger 1022 here, and I have five rounds of lead round nose. We're going to group that at 50 yards. And then I have a, another five rounds of the green 21 grain ammo. And um, we're going to see that how that groups at 50 yards. And then I have that round that jammed earlier. And I have a steel plate at 100 yards. I'm going to see if I can hit it with one of these, see if they veer off or anything. It's a pretty windy day out. 
Um, but it's not too horrible. Anyway, let's get let's get shooting here. I I I'm exhausted, as you can see. I I'm just I'm freaking. It's just meltingly hot out here, and that's not even a word. But anyway, let's get shooting. All right. So I realized that. You can't really see anything with the last video, so I, I'm just gonna speed through that. And uh, here are the five um, green ammo things. <laughs> Environmental science, dude. I'm gonna go for the bottom of the cross for this group. These are fast, you can tell that. That's 1600 feet per second. These are flying out of there for a 22. Wow, okay, so I have one. All right, we're back in action. And. We have another jam. Can you see the sweat just dripping off of me? <clears throat> anyway, we're back in action with the Last shot here for the group at 50 yards with the green hollow point 21 grain bullets. Wow, they, they're screaming out of there. So now we're gonna fire one at 100, see if we can hit it, and uh, then we're gonna go down and check our groupings. So here's the target at 50 yards. We we're firing from the wagon. And, uh, well, I was aiming at the bottom of this cross for the green tip and the left for the lead. But I can see these are green right here and they're all scattered around. I don't think because, I mean, I fire my 22 all the time and this more looks like the group I would expect out of the lead because I, I fire that stuff all the time. And that seems to be more accurate. And these are screaming out of here and they flew all over this target. Um, so it's going to be a bet to see if we can actually hit a hundred yards. All right. So these rounds cycle about 70% of the time and actually in the rifle here, they've been the worst. Um, so that's a knockdown and the group at 50 yards is just absolutely a horrible, like five inch horizontal shift, um, horizontal spread, I should say. And that, that's just not good either. But they are screaming out of here. So I'm going to see if I can hit this at 100 yards. This I just have a steel plate. It's like, I think, 8 inches wide, 16 inches long. And um, so if I hit this steel plate, these rounds are okay. Because um, they do have pretty good power. But just to get them on target and to get them functioning in your gun, it's been spotty. So if I hit this, they're awesome. Um, if I don't hit it, these rounds suck. Here we go. Um, you should hear it in the phone. I don't know. That went really fast. That was a fast bullet. I, I didn't see the steel plate move. I'm going to have to say that's a no. I'm going to go down there and check and give my outro. See you guys down there. Oh, God. Oh, God. I've been walking for days. I can't. Take it anymore. Me. Water. Oh, hey, how's it going? Um, so here's the target. These are all coming this way. Here's a bullet that I already hit before. Um, no entries. I don't see. There might have been something that hit right at that nail there. Um, but other than that. Didn't hear anything. So these short range, they say that in the title, short, a short range green ammo, environmentally friendly, lead free, blah, 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 more expensive than normal 22 ammo. While fun, while really fast, while shown to be powerful, if they are accurate in your bolt action gun, I'd say they'd be good to go if they are accurate because these rounds would actually be pretty cool. Um, but in the semi-automatics, they've shown to have been spotty. I gave both the pistol and the rifle example, two of the greatest. Well, the Smith & Wesson M&P isn't known, but hey, it functions, trust me. And um, 
the Ruger 1022, everyone knows that that is just freaking flawless. So, anyway, the autos, it's not so good. The accuracy is not so good. Um, so I would, I would not buy these again, personally, but I do this for you guys, so I would appreciate if you would subscribe, like, comment, share, and you know what, um, if you have more information uh, on better groups with these, uh, better groups with this type of ammo, better anything, really, um, chat with me. <sighs> this is the Heavy Gunner. I know you guys have listened to me ramble forever. It's probably due to heat stroke, but before I die of heat stroke. Have a great day and have a great life. The Hippie Gunner, out. Sounds like a tap.